With Steve Baker on the beach in the Bahamas with our basketball program, I'm your host Dave Meyer for this week's Red Hawk Football Weekly. And today, we're going to talk with Coach Martin about last week's 13-7 win over the Northern Illinois Huskies. All right, Coach, welcome to this week's show. Uh, first off, just why don't you give me your overall thoughts on the win? Yeah, obviously it was a really gutsy effort by us. I couldn't be more proud of our guys and our coaches. Uh, crazy underhanded on the defense side of the ball. No, you're going into Northern Illinois where they don't lose very many home games over the last decade. They don't lose midweek games. It's been very chronicled. They're six and zero. They're already the the MAC West champs, and they're riding high with the six. You know, I think they've won six straight games. So, um, we thought it would be a low scoring uh, play, close to best contest. We thought who turned it over, who played the better field position battle. Uh, would have the best chance to win the game, and our kids just hung in there, hung in there for 60 minutes. It seemed like every play of the game was on the line for 60 minutes. It's probably one of the most stressful games I've been a part of in a long time. Uh, but offense, defense, and special teams just kind of stuck together and played the field position game. And obviously, we have a big interception uh, by Jaden Rucker furlough that 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 turns the tide in a very close, low-scoring game and uh, gets us a five and two in the league. Gets us another huge win against a top opponent. Uh, coming off our huge win over OU the week before. And I know the Mallory men and all of that is, is a big deal to you. Can you just talk a little bit about, you know, winning that cup? Yes, it, it was awesome. It, just an awesome game to be a part of, first of all, with, with the history with Coach Mallory at Northern Illinois and the success he had there and obviously the crazy success he had at Miami uh, being the winningest coach in Miami history uh, and doing some incredibly special things here. And then obviously his career, you know, Colorado and Indiana, what he did. And then being at the inaugural year that we, we came up with this idea and uh, that both teams are fighting for it. I think it meant a little more to both teams. I know what it meant to Miami and our players and our coaches. And we've talked all year about trying to play the game the way Bill Mallory's teams play the game and tough uh, with great resolve, with great intensity, with great passion. And um, I, th I think Bill would have been proud of us uh, on, on Wednesday night. Perfect, I really appreciate that. So uh, first off, let's just take a look at the first half highlights. All right, we're gonna take over. Obviously, Bake's not here today, so I'm gonna kind of fly solo on these highlights, but the game was all about field position from the start, and here's the opening kickoff, and you're gonna see a great job. Jalen Bester, you're gonna see coming down on the right side, knifing in and, and making a huge tackle. And here, here's the offensive tailback slash kick returner running down and covering kicks. Jalen's been playing great football for us and, and, and gets them pinned deep to start off the game. Next clip, you got Mike Brown uh, knifing in. We knew Northern Illinois was running the ball for well over 200 yards per game in conference play. We knew we had a stuff to run. Our offense gets pinned deep. Uh, Gus comes out shooting. You're going to see an incredible catch by Mayock. We got a couple different looks at this one. But again, it wasn't about necessarily producing points. It was about continuing to flip the field. Our offense continually, whenever they were backed up, they at least moved the ball far enough to get us in position to pin them deep. Once again, Northern Illinois takes over on their own 20-yard line. A lot of different formations, a lot of different motions, trying to, trying to trick us, get us in misfits. There you see Doug Costin up in the inside. You see Mike Brown. You got Ryan McWood, who's, who's subbing in for, who, for Brad Koenig, who only could play about three snaps in the first series. There you see Brad, uh, obviously the best player in our defense, arguably the best player in our football team, not playing against, against the best team in the league. Northern L moves the ball. We're just to start the second quarter. Uh, you can see the numbers. Chiller's having a good game. Key second down here. Uh, Miles Reed gets off a block, makes a key play for us, uh, gets him to third down, puts us in a position to get off the field again. Our offense is able to take over. This is our best drive of the game. We get the ball to Zoe, pound the ball right at him north and south, uh, get us a key first down. We're now second and eight on the 36-yard line. Now we get the ball to Maurice Thomas on the perimeter. Maurice gets some nice perimeter blocking, knifes it all the way up to midfield. Uh, our offense is moving the ball. This also took seven minutes off the clock, which again is key uh, when you're going to play a low scoring field possession game. Time of possession is huge. We had 35 minutes of possession for the game. Now we get Kenny Young. We get a nice little pull play, get again some nice blocks up front. Kenny does what Kenny does, does the rest and rips off about another 20 yard gain. We're finally now down into their to field position. You see LaRubio. And, and Danny Godlewski out in front. You see Luke Mack with a good seal block. You see Tyler Fleetwood downfield hustling. So really nice job up front. Good job of Kenny bouncing the ball outside, as usual, finding the crease and getting us a big play. Now we're down to the 25, still trying to push the ball. We'd love to get seven points here. It's, it's third and seven. We get a little motion trying to figure out 
pre-snap for Gus if it's man or zone. We get a nice little screen pass again, really good out front blocking. LaRubio gets hurt on this play, as you see, but we get another first down and really nice methodical drive, which we took most of the time off the second quarter. Now special teams is always going to be key in a game. Sloman comes through, gets us a lead with the th three nothing lead. Seven and a half minute drive for our offense. Now our defense has to go out there and, and, and continue to play the way they've been playing. We got five minutes left in the first half. Uh, they run a little pick route. We're in zone coverage. Mike Brown reads it, makes a really good tackle in the flat. Again, our pass defense got better and better as the game went on. Key first and down play. You see the rush defense against an offense that's been running the ball very effectively, 296 yards per game the last two weeks. We get them to third and 16. Our third down defense was fantastic all day. I think they were two for 14 at the end of the day on third down. We get some pressure up inside, force him. He finds a guy late in the there, and then Jaden Rucker furlough. Everybody knows the big play he's going to make in a little bit, but that's a huge play. Him and Miles Reed never giving up on a play. It's two straight weeks, once against OU with Koenig, this week against Northern Illinois with Jaden Rucker furlough and Miles Reed. They get a big pass completion. Miles Reed, I think, ends up knocking it out, and, and Sterling Weatherford pounces on the football, and we go to halftime with a, with, with a great chance to have a lead. Late in the first half, again, ST, fantastic execution. Kyle Kramer on the punt. Trey Banks catching the ball inside the 10-yard line, putting them where they might have a chance to try to have a, a, a go at it before the half. But now you got them 94 yards from pay dirt and, and puts us in a, in a position at halftime. 3 nothing lead, low-scoring affair. ST's done their job. Offenses use clock. They've run the ball enough. They've kept our defense off the field, and obviously our defense has been playing great. All right, Coach, uh, went into halftime, 3 nothing lead. What did you tell the team in the, in the locker room? Um, pretty pleased with everything at this point. Um, obviously, you'd like to score a little more points, but a seven-and-a-half-minute drive grinds out most of the second quarter. ST's got to keep playing. They're playing the field position game. We're punting the ball well. We're covering our punts well. Our kickoff coverage was great on, on the only attempt. Um, our punt return team's doing a good job. Obviously, our defense has kept them off the scoreboard. They're running the ball effectively, but they're not, they're not necessarily jamming it down our throats. Uh, we're not necessarily stuffing it at this point, but we're getting better with each drive. Um, and then offensively, we haven't turned the ball over. Northern Illinois, it's block punts. They've, you know, leading the nation in block kicks. They're up there in the nation in sacks. They're up the nation tack for loss. Our offense keeps moving forward. So we are thinking 17-14, 21-17 coming in, a, a, a low-scoring game. That's how Northern Illinois plays. Uh, and it's kind of going to script. And we got to keep playing the field position game. We got to keep playing our staunch defense. And our offense got to keep trying to move the ball and, and keep flipping the field. Just talk about your team a little bit where, I mean, this team was almost left for dead a couple of times, right? The 0 3 start, you're 3 and 6, and now you're maybe your best two wins since you've been here back to back. I mean, when you factor in all the injuries, right? Just a really nice two, two game stretch. Yeah, and again, you start off the year 0 3 and we're not playing very good football. We played some good opponents, we know that, so we're not taking anything away from our opponents because part of why we didn't play good football is who you're playing. But we don't like the way we're playing. We talk a lot about after Minnesota about us just getting back to playing the way we know we're capable of playing and not worrying about anything, not worry about expectations. Let's, let's worry about playing football the right way. Talked even about Coach Mallory and how his teams play and how we're just going to play tough and hard nosed. We start playing good football. We have a really nice win at BG. We have a hard fought loss against Western. We have back to back nice wins, blowout wins against Akron and Kent. We play our tails off against Army and come up short in double overtime. We play our hearts off against Buffalo, who's obviously a really good team. And, and again, now you're sitting at a point where you're kind of left for dead again. You've played really good football. You have some wins to show for it, but you also have some tough losses to show for it. The resolve of our kids, who our kids are, unbelievable makeup, unbelievable character, unbelievable togetherness. No one thinks you're going to beat OU. You come in here, you really take care of business and play a strong game against a really good OU football team. And then the very next week you go on the road and, and play in a really tough environment in a midweek game and really cold weather and right in Northern Illinois' backyard where they're very used to winning football games. And we play their style of football. The game went at Zach Cloud, Northern wants to go, and we beat them playing their style of football. So uh, great, great two-week run. We've really been on a great eight-week run. Uh, we're five and three the last eight weeks, but the three losses, we've played our tails off. The five wins, we've played our tails off. So we've been in a really good groove for a long time. Um, kids have avoided listening to all the noise of the outsiders of we're going to do this, we're not going to do this, we're not, you know, kids have just kept playing. And we're getting better. There's guys that are getting better week 11, played their best football against Northern Illinois, and that's that's unbelievable job by our players and unbelievable job by our coaches. Perfect. Let's take a look at the second half highlights and just exactly see how we got to five and two.
All right, here we go. Again, it's field position. It's ST. It's a total team effort. Everybody wants to talk about the defense and low-scoring games, the offense, high-scoring games, but that's not how football works. Here's special teams again. Really good job by Bester. They pin him. He finds a crease right here, breaks a tackle, and again, Showing his versatility, he's kind of our young version of Kenny Young. I think that's the player he's becoming, that you can put him in any position and he can do any job and do it at an extremely high level. All right, Northern Alder takes over, but they got a long field. We got him second and seven. Um, back to pass, they're trying to throw a wheel route. Josh Allen takes away the wheel route, forces a short throw incomplete. Again, Northern Illinois had scored points by using their play action, using their launches, using their peels. Our kids were really well prepared, took away everything that they were trying to do and forced them into a check down there, and now we got them third and long. So again, looking, 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 nowhere to go. He forces a check down. They initially called this a fumble. It obviously was clearly a forward pass. Um, so they got it right when they looked at, at the video review. We knew it was going to be uh, overturned. Our guys in the box said it was clearly, it was not far forward, but it was clearly forward. There you see the replay of it. Barati's in great position, but really Josh Allen makes the play. They'd thrown the bubble. Now they throw the bubble launch, and Josh took it away by reading his key. So here we're getting a nice shot of the review. Uh, see Dean Lemon getting his hand up in the passing lane. Uh, whether it's incomplete or complete, I was hoping he'd catch it because Brody was right there. We're going to get a three or four yard loss if, if the, at that point in time we would, we would have got the completion. So a uh, really good job. You see Josh down the field and the coverage on the sidelines right there. We get a pass interference, a really tough call away from the throw uh, on this drive. We were off the field. We had a stop on third down. They end up driving down and scoring. Our offense gets a ball, puts together a really nice drive here. There's nine minutes going in the third quarter. We're down 7-3. We get, it, we get a push with up front, again, a nice crease. It doesn't take a lot. We know with Alonzo, we get a nice crease. He gets a nice first down when they're territory. Now we get the play action. Not our best throw of the night, but Jack goes down and makes a great catch at the 25-yard line. Huge play in the game right now, because now we're down in Sloman's field goal range. We're taking time off the clock. We're moving the ball. Once again, our offense answering a drive by the other team. They take a 7-3 lead. Sloman, we get stalled, but Sloman nails it right down the middle. Keeps the momentum going. Great answer to their touchdown. Set a 7-3 and them taking over. Now we've got some momentum. It's 7-6. we got to do a good job on kickoff. We pin them deep on the 25. Great play here by Jaden Rucker. Furlough, obviously, the play of the game. We jump into cover two. Jaden reads the quarterback, makes a great break, uses his great length. You'll see him right here reading the quarterback. Great reroute by Bart Barati. There's supposed to be a flag route in behind that would have stressed Jaden. The flag route doesn't materialize because Barati reroutes it. That allows Jaden to pounce on the flat route. Now we're up 13 to 6 and we're in great position. Uh, they take over. They mount a little drive. We get them to third and eight. And again, we've talked in previous weeks that, you know, the two conference games we haven't won. We really didn't do a good job. We've been really working hard and getting off the field on third down. Obviously, Wednesday night we did a fantastic job. Here's another third down. They're at our 42. Uh, their quarterback back to pass. Mike Brown, fantastic coverage on one of the, one of the fastest guys in our league uh, right there. And Mike Brown does an unbelievable job uh, locking their guys down all day in the slot receivers. Northern gets it back again, third quarter, four minutes to go. They got a chance to move the ball. Bart Parati again sniffs out the run, makes a great tackle for loss for us. We get him back to first and 20. Very next play, this is a Bart Parati series. They throw a screen pass. He sniffs that out. He gets us another tackle for loss. Uh, we've got him second and 22. Uh, they try to, try to push the ball down the field here on, on second and 22. Dean Lemon, uh, great, great push, comes up and under and gets a great sack and gets us off the field. Fourth quarter early, first possession of the fourth, fourth quarter. We get them third and eight again. Great coverage, as you can tell, downfield. Great pressure by our D-line. Forces Childers to throw the ball away. We get another stop, all right? Pretty much three and out, back and forth. We're going to defend five possessions in the fourth quarter. Here's the next one. They're going to go to the run game. Ryan McWood subbing in for the injured Caning makes a huge play as we continue to stuff the run. They cannot get the run game going. Our rush defense got better and better as the game went on. They've got first down on their 23 here. They're still trying to establish their run game. Uh, looking at the sidelines, scanning us, trying to decide and put themselves in the best position, make a play. They're going to run, run their inside zone play again. We're going we're gonna to bottle up. Doug Costin's going to do what he's done all year, been a dominant player on the inside, taking on double teams, splitting double teams. And we're right now really, really starting to take the run away and force them to throw the football. 
Get them to second and eight. There's 8.06, clock is whining. All right, you can see the rush discrepancy. They had a lot of rush yards in the first half. We did a much better job in the second half, particularly against their tailback. Here's another run. Really nice job by Miles Reed edging it. Great job by Duffin and the boys inside. And again, they're trying to keep, because that's what they do. They got enough time to run the ball, uh, but we're doing a good job stopping the run. Again, we force them in a longer yardage situation. We got them first and 16. We've been talking about intent. We've got a lot of guys that early in this year probably weren't playing any football for us that are stepping up and making plays. Here's another guy, Alan Koikoi. They try to throw a five yard out cut. We're making them earn every inch. Koi comes up with a huge hit on the sidelines here. Um, here's a kid that's been out with injuries for two straight years, was buried on the depth charts, worked his tail off, just has gotten better and better. And now he's making big plays and big games for us. Get him to third and two, three minutes to go in the game. You got a situation where you got to get a stop. Uh, they're, they're approaching midfield. Uh, you know they're probably going to run the ball. Uh, they decide to drop back and pass. We have a great job coverage. Uh, we get some pressure. Then senior Josh Allen, they try to run a double move, a little pivot route. Josh stays right with it, comes right over the top, bats the ball down nice and clean. Fantastic big time play on a third and two. Now we're down the last drive of the game. We got to get one more stop. We're second and 10. There's 224 to go. They've got no timeouts. Again, great break by Coy, great hit, making them use clock, making them earn every inch, playing physical from start to finish, run pass, contesting every play, not giving up on any plays. Uh, we get them now to third down. I think the next clip we're gonna get them all the way. Yeah, this is our third down clip. They're third and six with 2.15 to go. Clock is running. Childers back to pass, great job in man coverage again. Mike Brown with a late getting a hand in there and deflecting this one out. Blanket coverage on number 10, like I said, all day long, one of the better players in our league. Get to fourth down, we bring some pressure. <laughs> you got a freshman, Cam Butler, we were planning on redshirting before we lost three defense alignment injury for the season. You see 82 Butler come, squeeze right through the middle, gets right in Childers' face, doesn't have time to even really look to see if anybody's open, kind of just throws the ball for grabs. Again, Mike Brown, great coverage. Jaden Rucker, furlough, great coverage. And uh, we eke out an incredible 13-7 victory. Find out in pregame, you know, that Kanan can't go. He kind of does a Willis Reed for us a little like, we knew he couldn't go, but he wanted to give it a shot. So he basically started the game, played one series, uh, kind of took a little pressure off McWood as opposed to throwing McWood out the start. And then Ryan comes in and, and, and does an incredible job uh, in his absence. And you're talking no junior, no Koenig, no DeAndre Montgomery, no DeAndre Daniels, no Darius Thompson, no Nate Trawick, no Isaac Hampton, no Josh Mays. You're talking about six starters and two guys that would be starting if they were here healthy. And you're going into Northern Illinois and you hold them to one touch on the game. Pretty incredible effort by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. As the head coach of this team, how proud are you we just got through those highlights. The amount of guys that you named, McWood, you know, just the list went on and on of guys that you probably weren't even expecting a lot from this year, and yet the defense just and the offense just keeps going on and on and playing really well. Yeah, now our offense obviously has been rolling. They've had one major loss, but in the game, we lose three offense linemen in the middle of this game, you know, and we have other kids come in and step up and play their tails off, uh, losing three all linemen. Um, you know, defense, you're talking, Jaden Rucker furlough makes two of the biggest plays in the game. I, I never dreamed he would do anything but redshirt this year. You know, Ryan McWood's a walk-on, right, who's, who's came here and competed and worked his way up through special teams and kind of plotted through the depth chart. And then all of a sudden, um, our season's on the line. We're trying to get to five and two, trying to win, and he plays every single snap. Miles Reed, pl Miles Reed played every snap at will. All right, he's coming off a knee injury. We didn't even know if he was going to be ready this year. You're talking about Cam Butler. You're talking about Alan Koikoi. You're talking about Sterling Weatherford, you're talking about Mike Brown, all these guys like Bart Barati, like our best players now are guys that we weren't even counting on playing much and weren't playing much, you know, Marshall through Minnesota through the beginning of the conference season. A lot of the guys I get the questions all like who's number so and so who's and they're they're our best players we have playing right now and they're making the plays that are helping us win games. So um, obviously. All good teams get better as the year goes on. We've, we've gotten better. And like I said, we had kids play their best football their lives uh, Wednesday night and, and, and really made plays that they haven't made before and, and physicality that they haven't shown before. So we're just going to keep plugging away. Uh, even when I heard Koenig wasn't going to go, even I had the, you know, not a lot of doubt creeps into my mind, but I was even like, you know, maybe this is it. You know, maybe we've taken this thing as far as we could. I mean, when we lost all those guys, Koenig makes most of our plays. Uh, 
Uh, most of our highlights are usually run through 38. He's impacting a play, and it's like, okay, maybe we're out of gas. Maybe this, you know, it's been a heck of a run, but maybe this is, this is all this team has. And then they go out there and play arguably their best game of the year under tremendously adverse conditions, and they just stick together and keep playing. They don't, they've gotten the point. They don't worry about the score. They don't worry about the point. They're just trying to play football the way you want them to play football, and, and it's working out great for those guys. Big game coming up on Tuesday with Ball State. How much do you talk to the team about a chance of maybe going to Detroit for the championship or for winning a Mac East? How much do you guys talk about that? This yeah, week? we won't talk about it all. I know everyone else will talk about it. That's, again, a lot of the reason we probably didn't play as well this shoot because we're worried about what shoulda, coulda, woulda, had, what, you know, what, what a result will be. And in life, when you worry about results, you usually don't get the results you want. Doesn't matter what you're doing and sports are no different. Uh, we're gonna worry about preparing for Ball State uh, they're tremendously talented on offense. Um, they move the ball up and down the field on Northern Illinois. They probably had the most yardage all year against Northern Illinois. They got two really good quarterbacks. All right. Obviously, Riley Neal has been a great player in this league for years. They got Drew Plitt from Loveland, who we knew about in high school, is a really, really fine player. He came in last week and uh, scored, put 40 points on the board against Western Michigan. He can really throw the ball. He can really run the ball. So they got two really talented quarterbacks. They got four or five tailbacks. They got a slew of tailbacks like we got. We like our tailbacks. They like their tailbacks. And, and, and the Gilbert kid and the Dunner kid and all these kids that can really run and catch the football just like our backs. Um, the Hall kids as talented as receiver in his league. They got they got uh, two other two other more experienced receivers. They got like three guys with over 45 catches um, that that are really good players. Uh, their defense uh, has run and hit and played physical. Uh, they've had some more ups and downs based on injuries, but they've played some really good football and they played some great football and just beat a team that beat us at home. So we know what they're capable of. We know what this league is capable of. We know every week it doesn't matter. Everybody, I can't believe this score. I can't believe this score. I tell you every week, that's, it's our league. It's very even play. We got to prepare like we've been. They've got an extra day. We're on the short week. We only have a six day week this week. Uh, we, got, we got stuck in, in Naperville. We couldn't even get home because of the storm. So we're really out of whack with our schedule. Uh, but our kids are going to prepare. Uh, we're going to come ready to play Tuesday night. We're going to play as hard and as smart as we can, and we're going to try to find a way to get to our, to our sixth conference victory and get to six and two. We'd like to get to six and two and at least state claim that we're the second best team in the MAC this year behind Buffalo. Uh, it's kind of Buffalo, OU, Miami, and, and Northern kind of battling for that title. And if we could win this week, we'll have beaten two of those three uh, in the last, last three weeks of the season. So, um, we're excited about playing one more game. We're excited about playing another big game. We've had four straight big games on ESPN, which is huge for our program. A hard-fought loss against Buffalo, two crazy hard-fought victories against OU and Northern Illinois. You're talking about we played the three best teams in the MAC the last three weeks and have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with not a loaded deck, all right, with, with, with not all our, our, our bullets in our holster, our kids have played the tails off, and we're really excited about our opportunity to play on ESPN in another really big game. All right, and then last question I've got. Quick comment on your seniors. I think you got 19 of them playing in their last game. Here. Yeah, I wish we had 19 playing in our last game. Well, we got about true. eight playing in their last game. <laughs> so true. most of the seniors uh, we haven't seen in a while, but uh, the guys that are still afloat defensively, uh, obviously Josh Allen, uh, we're hoping to get Koenig back. We don't know at this point in time. Um, and, and then Quinn Calcagno up front. All, we have some other great seniors that unfortunately right. injuries ended their ended, ended their last season at Miami and then obviously offensively uh you got you got McCollum you got Rig you got Zoe you got Kenny you got Gus um as the as the healthy seniors on that side of the ball so we're only down about eight seniors playing it was going to be the year that we're going to rely on our seniors and do all these special things and that's life life doesn't always go according to plan and when when bad stuff happens wreck so it's it's a group that I have crazy respect for, like I said a couple weeks ago after the OU game, they came here and they jumped on the worst situation possible, a team that lost 16 straight games. And, and we didn't have any facilities and we had no belief and no hope. And um, they've fought their tail off. We talked about two weeks ago, we we're 4-26 and 26 in conference play. All right, so a robust 11% winning percentage <laughs> over a three-year span. So 4-26 and 26 in conference is pretty disgraceful. That senior class has now turned and flipped that around where we've won 15 of our last 21 conference games. We're 15 and 6 in the MAC. And somebody asked me the other day when we're going to get things turned around at the grocery store. And I was like, well, 4 and 26 to 15 and 6, I think that's a pretty significant turnaround. So those seniors are what we have to thank for that turnaround. Sure. They have fought and they've been through a lot of bad times, but they have fought and created a lot of good times for themselves in Miami football. I'm really excited to watch them play one more time. All right.
I think that'll do it. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you.